It is a great day to learn how to play Heaven Hold'em, and here we are with Bennett and Jamin, who are going to help us out in learning how to play Heaven Hold'em with two players, and you can apply what you learn here to playing with three to ten players as well. First things first, Jamin, you're going to be the dealer. Go ahead and grab the cards. Make sure they're shuffled up well. You can play with the deluxe base set, or you can play with the 2019 core set, or any other future starter set. And then Bennett's going to go ahead and grab the jewels out of the silver bag. And we have a brand new jewel in this game called the Amethyst, which is worth 50, which is super fun and super awesome. And Bennett's gonna dump them all out and we're gonna divvy up the treasure equally. So Jamie, go ahead and help with that to start off with. And then Bennett's gonna go ahead and open up the rules here for us. And we highly recommend even with uh, though watching this tutorial video that you take a look at the rules or at least have them opened up. Of course, he's got the awesome Jesus card here for the Heaven Hold'em game. And then you're going to also have the uh, key for all the matches. And then there is a three page uh, tutorial, which is going to match what we kind of talk about here, uh, where it kind of walks you through what to do, how to get set up. And then of course the gameplay here, uh, everything from the conversion round to the beatitude round to the paradise round and so on and so forth. So Jamin is doing a great job divvying up the treasure here. And the goal of Heaven Hold'em is what, Bennett? What's the goal? What's the goal of the game? I, to, to get the most treasure. To get the most treasure, right? So you can set it up to where you play for 60 minutes, say, and whoever has the most treasure at the end wins, or whoever is ahead after 20 rounds. But who is the ultimate winner, Jamin, in this game? What'd you say? Um, the ultimate winner is the one who gives all the treasure to Jesus. The one who gives all the treasure to Jesus. The goal of the game is to gather all the treasure at the table so that we can give it to Jesus. That's awesome. All right. So Jamin's almost done divvying up all the treasure. So if you're playing with two players, this is exactly what you want to do. We've got amethysts and diamonds and we've got sapphires and rubies. And you can bring in some of the gold from uh, other sets. And once you've got them perfectly divided up uh, between two players or three players or four, whatever it is, you shove them over to the side. And now we are ready to play. And now the dealer gets to work. All right, so Jamin's going to go ahead. He's already shuffled the cards. And now the game begins with the small blind. So Bennett, who is not the dealer, gets to place the small blind. And whenever he takes the small blind, which is the ruby, He's going to go ahead and place it in one of these 10 spots here. So you can play with up to 10 folks. So you can see here that Ben is using this spot for his offerings. We don't bet in heaven hold them. We make offerings. And then Jamin is going to go ahead and do the big blind. All right, so the sapphire is there. And the dealer is going to go ahead and grab the, uh, he's going to go ahead and grab the treasure and, and place it off to the side. And the game begins. All right, so now Jamin is going to go ahead and burn a card off to the side and then he's going to deal out two cards and it's etiquette in the game of heaven hold to not look at your cards until everybody's ready to look at their cards so here they go and swinging over here we can see what jamin's got okay mm, interesting interesting hand all right and of course he does not want bennett to know what cards he has let's see what bennett has over here all right so the goal of heaven hold is to match these two cards with two of the five cards that are turned over during the course of the game. Of course, the one that has the most matches ends up being the winner for the round. And so now it is time for Bennett to go ahead and make some choices. He can make an offering, he can check. He makes an offering of five. And let's see what Jamin does. Jamin puts out five and calls. It's placed in the storehouse. And now it's time for the flop on your knees before the father. We've got St. Romwald, St. Peter Damien, and St. Joseph. Now, anytime a wild card is turned over, any card that you have matched up to that wild card is worth at least three. And if you have any more matches, let's say it's a lay person or the month of May or March, then that's an extra match, all right? So any player can match their card on either side with another card there. So it looks like we've got St. Romuald, St. Peter Damien, and St. Joseph. So now taking a look at Jamin's hand, he can see that he's got a couple matches going on. Is it enough to beat Bennett though? Of course he doesn't know. And let's take a look at Bennett's hand again. Bennett has got a pretty good hand. 
and already he can see maybe some cards that he would like to match his two with. It's time for Bennett to make an offering. What's he going to do? He puts in a diamond for 20. Forces Jamin to decide whether or not he wants to keep playing or not, or give up. What's he going to do? Jamin puts out 20. And we move into the next round. And it's now time for the turn your eyes upon Jesus. And another wild card is out. Now here's the thing in the two-player game, having two wild cards out, both players can play against it. So this round is going to have at least six. Because any card played here is worth three. Any card played here is worth three. So at the very least, even if there's not any good matches over here, the players can be guaranteed six. But that doesn't necessarily help you win the round. And now Bennett's got an interesting decision. What's he going to do? Bennett decides to offer 25 and it's to Jamin. Jamin, he calls the 25 and it's put off to the storehouse and now it's time for the river of the water of life. And it ends up being Padre Pio. Very nice. So these are the five cards that these players can play off of, but they can only pick two cards to match with. Now it's possible for both players to match with the same card on either side. So what, what Bennett is about to do is he's about to lay down his cards and as soon as he lays his card down across from whatever card, his play is locked in. He cannot move it. Even if he finds other matches with another card. So it's really important that he picks the right side. And so Bennett, uh, the whole, we, got, we got one more round of raging. Sorry, one more round of offering. What's he going to do here? He puts in 40. And Jamin is trying to decide whether or not Bennett is, I don't know, maybe doing a little bluffing. Does he really have that good of cards? Or do you want to see his cards? That's what you got to decide. Of course, all of the fun of the Hold'em games, we hope to, to have in this Heaven Hold'em. But... Uh, of course, what you're doing, what James is doing right now is actually memorizing facts about the saints. He's looking at the cards that he has and seeing how similar those are with the cards that are laid out and locking in. Okay, this person was, was from this century or this person did the same thing as this other person, so on and so forth. So the more you play Heaven Hold'em, the more you end up learning about the saints. He calls. He puts an offering out of 40 and matches Bennett's offering. And now that storehouse is looking pretty sweet. Let's see. It's a moment of truth. Bennett, what are you going to match up with here? He puts St. Ansgar up next to St. Peter Damien. Let me turn these around so the video can see a little easier here. Bennett, how many matches is that, buddy? Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. They're both Benedictines too, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got priest, religious man, Benedictine, they both have a feast month in February, and they're both from Western Europe. That's worth five matches. Very nice. And he's also got St. Rita of Kesha. So he matches up St. Rita with uh, St. Joachim. He already, he already laid it down. That's okay. Uh, he already laid it down. So this is a good example. He's got, uh, he ended up with three matches because he matched up with a wild card. Plus, he's got a lay person here. So this is actually worth four if he had placed it here, it would have been worth five because St. Joseph's a lay person and they would have matched Feast Month May. But even still, four is a good play. He played it. And so as soon as you lay the card down, it's locked in. He's got nine, everybody. Very nice. Can Jamin tie it or match it? He's shaking his head no. Let's see. What can he do? I think I got one, two, three, four here. Okay, so he matches St. John of Beverly up with St. Peter Damien. Of course, they're both Benedictines, religious men, and priests, and from Western Europe. That's worth four. Can he get up to nine? Four. And he's got another four. So he matched up May, and of course, since it's a wild card, that's worth another three. So in that round, Bennett wins. He got nine matches. Jamin got eight matches. That was close. So Bennett ends up taking all of the storehouse of treasure and adding it to his... his um, uh, his, his offering basket. <laughs> and now the dealer go ahead, goes ahead and cleans up. And the dealer ends up moving over to Bennett. So for this next round, Bennett is going to be the dealer. Let's do another round. Let's see how it goes. All right. And before we do though, uh, everybody, you, you guys wave and say hi to everybody. Hi. And tell them why you like Heaven Hold'em. 
Well, I, I like it because it's uh, like secretive, and you're you're um, you have your cards. You're make you're trying to see it. You know, sometimes if I have like really bad matches, I'll put out a lot of treasure and make him feel like I have really good matches to force him, so I can grab all that treasure. But um, there's other times where I feel like that he has a really good hand and that he's not going to back off, so I kind of want to. Fold, uh, fold. Yeah. Or, yeah, fold. Yeah. Uh, where he just takes all the treasures. So I love the strategy in the game. I think it's very well. And I really, and I really like how it's secretive. That's probably my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of a mystery, right? Mm -hmm. How about you, buddy? What do you think, Bennett? I I like um j just betting and uh, offering. Yeah. Or offering. <laughs> you like making offerings, right? Yeah. Yeah, what do you like about it? Well, I, I like how uh, they, they could do something else, or I can, or y you can just bet whatever you want. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, let's go ahead and let's get into to round number two. All right, so Bennett's going to be the dealer this round, and let's see how it goes. So, uh, Jamin is going to be the small blind position. He puts out a ruby. Bennett's a big blind position, puts out a sapphire. All right, so that goes into the pot. Bennett, let's get some cards out there. So we're going to burn the first card, and then Jamin gets a card. Oh, wait. oh not yet. Not quite yet. That's okay. We'll put this, we'll put this, we'll burn this here. Go ahead and deal with Jamin his card first. Deal, deal Jamin his card first. There you go. There's a card for Jamin, and a card for Bennett, and a card for Jamin, card for Bennett. All right, now both look at your hands, and let's see what we're dealing with here. This is Jamin's hand. Very nice. And here's Bennett's hand. All right. Now, Jamin, you get to play first. Jamin puts out 20 to start off with before he even sees the flop. Very interesting. And Bennett matches that offering that goes into the pot. Now it's time for the flop on your knees before the father. So Bennett, as the dealer, is going to go ahead and burn a card and lay down the flop. And here it is. St. Peregrine Laziosi. St. Olga of Kiev. And St. Margaret of Scotland. Two lay people, a religious man, and lots of other matching possibilities there. So now they're going to look at their hand and decide whether or not they've got some good enough matches to continue going. And it's Jamin's turn for his offering. He puts out 10, two sapphires. Bennett calls with two sapphires, and now it's time for the turn. Your eyes upon Jesus. And we've got St. Bruno of Cologne that's turned up. And Bennett has got to decide, and Jamin's got to decide whether or not it's worth continuing to go. It's Jamin's turn for an offering. He puts out 20. And Bennett calls. And it's time for the river. Let's see it. Card is burned. And the river card is St. George of Lydda. These are the five that they're going to make matches off of. And it's Jamin's turn. What is he going to do? He puts out one sapphire, a, a, a little bit of a small offering, and Bennett's got to think, is he trying to, what is he trying to do? Does he want to call at five, or does he want to raise? What does he want to do? Fold. He folds. And Jamin never gets to see his card, and Jamin gets all of the offerings onto his side. So the game continues back and forth, and now they're going to clean up, and they're going to take care of all this and get ready for round three. And so as soon as you run out of cards to draw, of course, you can shuffle this pile and, um, and, and get, get started again. But it's one of those games that can go on for hours, right? And it's just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Or it can be a short and sweet. You can just you know, decide whether or not you want to do 15 rounds or, or 60 minutes or whatever it is. Um, but we hope this tutorial was really helpful to at least get you started with the fun of the game. And then just so you know, one of the things we didn't show you here is this Jesus card is passed back and forth. So whoever is the dealer ends up having the Jesus card. And then at the end of the game, whoever ends up with the most treasure is going to take all the treasure and place it at the feet of Jesus. So that is the Heaven Hold'em tutorial. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. All right, see you on the next video.